Yo guys, what's up? It's Crips, and today I'm going to be showing you all the streetwear sets from the Bungie 30th Anniversary event. Now you will need to purchase the Anniversary Pack to get access to these sets. And once you've purchased the pack, you need to head over to Shirt in its Throne Horde, and he will have a package containing all of the sets. Now in this video, I'll be showing you all of the sets with shaders, so I will leave timestamps on screen if you want to skip ahead. And if this video does help you out, then please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And without further delay it's time we get straight into the sets so i'm firstly going to be starting off with the hunter set and as you can see for the hunter we have this ski look now looking more into the individual pieces the hat here is actually a part of the cloak so as you can see when we change up the cloak this is literally what the helmet will look like it's not too bad on its own although the only issue is that the visor does not shader as you can see it doesn't get tinted whatsoever and i feel this is a bit of a missed opportunity then as for the arms and chest they do form a nice jumper it is quite bad and you can see as well that we do have gloves on. It's a nice little touch and it will show when you're holstering weapons. And honestly, you're sort of forced to use the chest plate with the arms, as they do look awkward with other pieces. Now I did try Kateria, but these do look a little bit thin. So if you do want to use either of these pieces, then I would recommend using them together. Now although this may limit you with some sets, I do think it's a pretty nice design overall. And something quite interesting about the Bungie logo on the hoodie is the fact that it does glow. Then moving on to the boots, we do see some form of ID. And these overall have a pretty good design. Like I mentioned with the helmets, this could be really good for like a hazmat set. So you could try making something with the R3 treads. It's pretty well detailed and with Skelegor, I did find it to go a really deep black. So if you are trying to make a blackout look, I think this is a great pick for that as well. And then as for the cloak, like I mentioned earlier, the beanie is a part of it. And something I do want to point out is that the hood of the hoodie is actually part of the cloak. So if you want to use the full hoodie, then you will need to use the chest plate with the cloak. And as you can see on the back as well, the logo does glow with some shaders now anyways moving on to the shaders i'm going to be starting off with vintage timber now this is a very interesting shader from the solstice of heroes events and as you can see it does make these glows pulsate then next we have gambit jade stone which was from the season of dawn now i want to show this shader as i know a lot of people really love this so it's very bright and vibrant glows although on this set i don't think it looks that good creating a much lighter look on the boots although you could switch these out for a darker shader like skeletal then one of my personal favourites is Gunmetal Marigold. Now this shader was from the Season of Dawn and as you can see it has a really nice mix of different colours. And I think that's what works really well with this set is when you introduce these nice vibrant colours. And shaders like Techno Fusion from Season of the Splicer as well as Seven Sisters really benefit from this. And if you didn't know how to get Seven Sisters it could sometimes be sold in the Brightness store. Now I will say most of these other shaders are quite boring in terms of how they shader. A lot of these shaders will just stick to their primary colour so I definitely recommend mixing and matching with this set. Now some other shaders I know you all might want to see is Jack Arena. This is another shader that can sometimes be sold in the brightest store. Now for any of you wanting a dark look, Skelegor is a really great choice from the Festival of the Lost. You won't have as much success with Amethyst Veil vale, as it does create some grey as well as some blue and some light colours on the helmet and boots. And I honestly think going with Bitter Pearl is a much better choice if you're a new player to the game. It creates a really nice all white look on this set and you can easily get this from the vault of glass raid so yeah i'd pretty much only recommend bright and light colors on the set i overall don't think this is a bad set although it isn't that good for mixing and matching but yeah i would love to hear what you all think of the set in the comments below and now it's time to move on to the titan set so here is the male titan set and you can see it has the look of a biker now something that i quite like about this set is the reference to the needler on this right shoulder plate now looking more into the helmet we have this really cool face guard design with this cap with the bungee logo now this is the one thing i did find could not shader on the headpiece although i do not think this ruins the helmet whatsoever now something else you can see on the side here is this slight light glow it isn't too bright with most shaders although you will find a gambit jade stone it will stand out quite a bit then moving on to the arms we have this really nice curved design on the shoulder plating which do give a smaller spike design it offers a really unique look and if you didn't know these crystals do 
act as a glow. So if you do use really bright shaders like Gambit Jade Stone, then it will definitely stick out in the dark. And the glow can also pulsate with vintage timber. Now as for the chest plate, we have this really awesome jacket with these nice stamps going all around the front and also the back. You can see that we have the Bungie Anniversary logo right on the back. And then we have MC towards the bottom, which is a reference to Master Chief. I can definitely see this being a pretty good flexible piece. You could probably try switching out the arms for something like the Symphoseps. Maybe even using the Siva ornaments, using the tear in here to show like a breakout of Siva on the body. Now I don't know what this is meant to be here, but it does glow. So your shaders can also have an effect on this. And if you do know what it is, then please let me know in the comments below. Then as for the boots, they remind me a bit of the Lux boots, both some padding underneath. And a great thing about these boots as well is that they have no unshadable pieces. So I can definitely see this pairing across many different sets, and it creates an almost all black look with Skeletal. So this will definitely be a great choice for the blackout look. And then moving on to the mark, it is quite a minimal mark along the side, although around the waist it does have a bunch of equipment. Again, there doesn't appear to be any unshadable parts, although unlike the Hunter, the anniversary logo does not not glow. Now moving on to the shaders, this definitely shaders a lot better than the Hunter set. As you can see burnished reed from the event. This shader somewhat replicates the Master Chief colours. Now another shade I quite like is Plated Lupness from this season's Vanguard. And I think the shaders on this are quite nice. The secondary colours definitely help the details pop out. Then we have Reef Regalia from this season's Eververse and this adds some really nice metallics. As you can see on the left shoulder plate it really helps it shine and stand out. And it also helps these buckles and wires to stick out even more as well. Now another shade that looks pretty good for a darker look is Abyssinian Gold. This is a shader that can sometimes be sold in the brightest store. Then next we have Cryptic Insignia from the Deepstone Crypt Raid. And this does add a bit of a glow to these spikes, giving some nice blue colours on the metallic parts of the set, while also providing some darker colours on the chest plate, allowing these stamps to stand out even more. Then next we have Rustberry, which is also from the Brightest Store, and this is going to be great for anybody trying to create a leather look on the chest plate. Now one of my personal favourite shaders again is Gunmetal Marigold from Season of Dawn. Just like with the Hunter set, it really works well with the Titan. Now here is Jack Arena for any of you wondering. Now I only think this looks good on the chest and arms. On the boots it does create a bit of this weird texture. Then we have Valkyrie Zero from Season of the Worthy. Offering a really nice bright orange look. And it's personally one of my favourite shaders. Then here is Gambit Jade Stone on the entire set. And pretty much the shoulder plate is the main highlight. Now unfortunately for any of you which don't have this it is no longer obtainable. We also have Begiz and Knight which was from Forges. Although I mainly wanted to show the helmet here as it does create a crystallised look on the faceplate. Then extra Dreaming Cast and also Dreaming Spectrum from the Last Wish Raid. Although Dreaming Cast can also drop from Dreaming City activities. And then some final shaders we have Seven Sisters from the Bright Dust Store. And this pretty much creates a nice galaxy texture on most of the cloth. Then there's Dawn in Tranquility, which could return next week in the Dawn in event. And then finally we have Rose Scale, which is the Crucible Shader for this season, and offers a nice all red look. So yeah, compared to the Hunter set, I think this one is much better. The best pieces I find in this set are the chest plate and the arms. And you have a lot of potential with these arms because of the spiky glow. So yeah, just let me know what you all think of the set in the comments below. And now it's time to move on to the Warlock set. So here is the female Warlock set, and I must say this is the best of the three. It has a really awesome look which is inspired by Arbiter which is a character from the Halo franchise and you can see from the bond design as well it does mimic the Halo ring. Now looking more at the helmet here we have this really awesome faceplate design. Now an amazing thing about this helmet is that it can fully shade her although the visor does get a bit tinted and as you can see when I use Valkyrie Zero as well it has a bit of this fishnet design on the top. Although if most of you are just going for like a blackout look, then this won't really be much of an issue. Then moving on to the arms, on the left hand side here, it is quite a simplistic design with this scaly texture. Now I do want to point out that this texture does get removed with shaders. And on the other side of the arm, as you could see, there is some plating matching up with the robes. 
Now you will find that this shader works really well with metallics, matte colours won't really help the plating to stand out, and an issue you may find with some shaders is that this padding can stick out with the primary colour. It doesn't happen with all shaders, but with some it can make it look worse. Then as for the boots, it does follow that same sort of under armour design on the chest plate, although it has some really nice padding and buckles going over the boots. Now these can definitely work in a blackout set, as you can see with Abyssinian Gold creating a mostly dark look. This also works really well with shaders like Skelegal. So yeah, as for Warlock boots go, these are definitely a great piece to use. They're often quite plain, but these ones have a lot of detail to them, and you can definitely create some really unique looks with these boots, as it does allow the secondary colour to pop out with some shaders. And then finally, like I mentioned, it does look like the Infinite Rin. It has a very simplistic design, and with some shaders, it does shade a lighter on the inside than it does on the outside. And yes, with shaders like Gambit Jade Stone, this will Will create a really bright glow. The only issue I find with this bond is that it will create some clipping depending on the robes you are using. Much slimmer robes will be better for this. Now moving on to some shaders, some of the newer ones from this event are really nice. Smudge Park creates a somewhat skull look, so you can create like a reaper set with this helmet. Then we also have Burnish Reed, which has the Master Chief colours, and I think it does create a really awesome look here. Then there's Skitch Paint, which does create a really bright blue on the robes. Now some other ones I really like at Amrita's Dream from this season's pass. Then next we have Omnicronia from the Victory Over the Vaults bundle, and this is great for any of you wanting some really nice black and gold looks. Now for any of you wanting a darker look, here is Abyssinian Gold. You can also use Amethyst Veil, which I think does a better job at this, and both of these shaders can sometimes be sold in the Brighter store. Now again, I want to recommend Raspberry for any of you wanting to create a leather look. This worked really well on the Titan set, and on the Warlock it looks just as good. Then next we have First Frost from the Season of Undying. Now unfortunately this shade is no longer obtainable, although it creates a really awesome look on the helmet again. And on the faceplate as well you can see that it has this somewhat galaxy texture. Now unfortunately with Seven Sisters you won't really get that galaxy texture as there isn't much cloth apparent. Then for some final shaders we have Gambit Chrome which creates this really nice light and silver look. Then we have Dreaming Cast and also Dreaming Spectrum from the Last Wish Raid. Then we have Metro Shift and Arctic Pill from the Shader Bundle in the Eververse Archive. Both of these are great choices if you're new to the game. Then we also have Callus is Treasured and Callus is Selected from the Leviathan Raid. Callus is Treasured being a great pick for a gold look. And Callus is Selected being a pretty nice pick if you want to create like a skull look on the face. And then finally we have Gambit Jade Stone with a bright green glow on the bonds and then a dark green look on the rest of the set. And it's unfortunately no longer obtainable. So yeah, they're pretty much all of the streetwear sets. Let me know which one is your favourite in the comments below. I personally think the Warlock is the best of the three. It has some really awesome helmet and robe design. Although I must say the Titan definitely has a really great chest piece and arm as well. So yeah, I hope this video gives you some better insight into these sets. And go ahead and join my Discord if you haven't already. It has over 6,000 members and is a great place to share and get some advice on your fashion. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching and an extra thank you to all my YouTube members. Stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.